uh, whatever I presented today is just based on my research and for your reference only. Okay. So today we'll touch on, we'll answer these questions. Okay, is the right time to enter market now? Why should you buy integrated development? Why should you own a home in the new Lentor enclave? And what, what are the exit points of Lentor Modern? What are the highlights of Lentor Modern and how to increase the closing rate in Lentor Modern? So I will touch on the first four and our project DD Dixon will uh, answer to this question and then will be answered this question, the last one. Okay, so I will start my part. Okay, is it the right time to enter the market now? Um, does it sound very familiar to you? Okay, um, do you always hear this from your clients? Okay, so your clients all, may also tell you like, wow, the price is very high now. Last year was much cheaper. So what would you tell your clients? Okay, I think, yeah, they are right. Lah. The price did increase. Lah. The price did increase. Lah. <laughs> okay, so for the Amor Residences, our residents sold ninety eight percent on launch day and at the average price of two thousand one PSF. Okay, so this uh, Amor launch was just launched uh, end of last month. Okay, but do you still remember how much did Panorama sell during launch? Like about like eight years ago. So that time it's about like, around like one thousand three PSF. How much they can sell now? Now it's like uh, around like up to like 1,008 PSF. So you can ask your buyer la, if you were back to like eight years ago, will you consider to buy a panel? So, so same, same you can tell your buyer. Okay, if you don't buy Lantern Modern now, so maybe five years later, you will say a uh, Lantern Modern was, wow, Lantern Modern was very good price at that time like, and I should buy. Okay, the price is always like that. La. It's like today's high, it's tomorrow's low. Okay. So you see these are the HDB resale price up for uh up for 24 months and the condo resale price also rise. So not only new sale price is rising, HDB resale and condo resale price is also going up. So basically the price of whole property market is rising. So the growth uh, the growth in property property price uh Private, uh, private property index uh, is uh, rises by 18% in the past two years. In the past two years. So your client may ask you again, uh, wow, the price rise rises so much. Uh, so should I just wait? Uh, because maybe the price will drop. Uh, okay. So let's see. Uh, the price will drop or continue going up. Okay. Uh, okay. So if uh, you have invested your money in stock market, I think maybe eight of 10, uh, you may feel very happy now. You see this graph, uh? this graph is all the way falling down from beginning of the year. So in this bearish stock market, will you still invest your money in? And you see the news article. So the S&P 500 tumbles nearly 4% to new low. Okay, and also the crypto also crashed. So the financial market this year is very terrible and uncertain. You can see clearly here, during two, this year, 2022, S&P 500, the index are dropped by 20.6. And the, but while the, at the same time, uh, the private property index increased, okay, rise by 3.9%. Okay, so it proves that the property is more resilient during a certain times. Okay, a lot like, and, uh, and also I uh, like stock, stocks or crypto. Value of like real estate will never drop to zero. Okay, so you should think now, uh, market, uh, the property market, which one should yes? Okay, so for me, so for me, I will choose property. Okay. Then if you say uh, it is not a good time to invest in stock market, then should I save my money in bank? Many is very safe, ma. Like no risk, and they pay interest to, to, to us, to you. Okay. However, you should take the inflation into consideration. Okay. You see this table. This table tells us uh, the current core inflation, the core inflation up to four point four percent, which is the highest level since November two thousand eight. Okay, so the rise in the core inflation reflects 
reflects on what? It reflects stronger prices increase across the uh, broad categories of like services, food, retail, and other goods, and as well as well as electricity and gas. So basically, uh, everything like related to your uh, daily life is affected. Okay. So you can see this. The poor hawkers are. Uh, they have to write, raise the prices by 10%, 20%, 30% and more. Because why? Because the cost of ingredients and their rental are all going up. They have to raise the, the price. So maybe like after, before COVID, are you likely to like spend uh, $4 for ban mian? Then now maybe you have to like pay $5 or $5.50. Then for the drinks, uh, if I buy a uh, fruit juice um, before COVID is maybe like two fifty, dollars but now we have to buy, pay like $3, about $3. Okay, so do you feel the cost of living is rising? Do you feel that? Okay, so let's now take the inflation into consideration. Okay, so, um, so if you have like one mil cash, you have one mil cash in uh, two, 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 2006, okay, if you count in inflation, you count in inflation, okay? So the 1.3 mil in 2022 equals the value of 1 mil in 2006, correct? Okay, so if you put your, in, you put your money in a bank, okay? Uh, after the interest they give you, okay? How much you have? You only have 1.06. Okay, so in a way that you lost about 300k, lost about 300k over these years. Okay, but however, if you bought a 1 mil private property in 2006, so based on the price index, okay, the private property index, uh, okay, your property was 1.9 mil now. Okay, so which one is better? Okay, so you can see this chart. Uh, this graph okay um uh, over these years uh, you see how uh, the inflation is up is rise by 38 percent but the private property rise by 94 percent so the private property rise index has grown faster than than the consumer price index which is inflation okay over the last 50 years so over the long run real estate is good hedge against the inflation okay okay so now uh, i have a question for you if you have one mil cash will you put your money in stock market in bank or in real estate so you can type one uh, in the chat box if you want to put your money in the stock market and type two if you want to put in the in the bank and type three is real estate okay so you can type now, uh, let me see other uh, chat. Okay. I see you have one is one, two, three. Uh, so you want to you have so much you're so cash rich. Uh, you want to invest all. Okay, very good. Okay. So I saw a lot of trees, uh, a lot of trees in chat box. So I think uh you all agree to invest your money in property, right? Right? Okay. So if you agree on that, uh, okay, uh, Lento Modern is waiting for you, okay. Is waiting for you. Okay. So uh especially for those like cash rich. Uh, okay. So very important to know where to invest money, right? So Lento Modern definitely is a good choice for you. Okay. Ah, okay, so those like savvy and wise investors also think in in this way. Same as same as same as us. Uh. So that's why they bought property this year. Okay. Hence, uh, although the price is uh now the price is getting higher. The demand is also getting stronger. Okay, so let's see what happened in 2022. Okay, so in 2022, we launched these four projects. Uh, Belgravia Ace, Piccadilly, Grand Leaf and B, and Amor Residences. So especially for like Piccadilly, Grand and Leaf and MB, uh, um, these two like launched um, two, three months ago, and Amor uh, launched last month, right? Okay, so for these four, these four projects, okay, they sold almost like almost 80% or more than 80% this year in a few months only. Just in a few months, okay? So can you feel the strong demand? 
Can you strong, feel the strong demand from the buyer now? And after you feel uh, the stronger, the strong demand from the locals. So how about foreigners? So you can see uh, more high networks people reloc relocated to Singapore and also those like ultra rich Chinese also are moving to Singapore. So meaning to say uh, there, are, there are more cash flowing to Singapore and the demands for foreigners are also getting stronger. So when we say uh, the, the, the demand is getting stronger, so how about the supply? So you see the supply. Okay, supply here. This is the first quarter 2022. And, and this uh, is the lowest since 2006. Okay, 2006. So, and I think I uh, even lower now, uh, the second quarter 2022. Okay, so you see, uh, when the demand is getting higher, the supply is uh, the supply of current new home store is getting lower. It's getting lower now. Let's see the details. Uh. Okay, you see the inventory. Okay, in OCR. Okay, let's see this. So for the OCR, how many total? How many units left now? Okay, this is based on the our existing uh projects that we we are selling now uh. Okay, so how many units that left? Only 730. With 730 units, uh, it's just about the total unit of a new new project. Just so basically, I uh, only have like one new project to sell currently in OCR. Right? And for the one bedroom and two bedroom, uh, only left what? Only left six units. For the two bedroom, only left like 66 units. So actually, the one and two bedroom, you also know like, yeah, the units are most like mm, favorable to the investors. Okay? But too bad, no stock for them already. Okay. And for the RCI, same. Okay. RCI is same. You see, it's only 910 units uh, available now in total. So if your buyer would like to invest in RCI and OCR, you really don't have a lot of choices already. Okay. So this is the current status. You can see it's, the inventory is very low. Uh, for the for the for those like existing uh projects that we are selling okay so how about those like upcoming projects so for upcoming projects are only 2700 about there uh, the rcr ocr units will be released to sell this year so the supply will remain low in 2022 okay so question uh, so when demand is outpacing supply what will happen what will happen? Do you think will the price still drop? Of course, no, right? If when demand is outpacing supply, definitely the price will, is, will continue going up. Okay? So this answers the first question. Huh? Okay? So let's move to the next huh? The next one. So why should you buy an uh, integrated development? Why? Huh? Let's see. Okay. So this chart uh, is the is based on the survey by HPROP. So this one is the is the percentage of respondents who are willing to pay more with these features. Okay. So you see the top features are like some, uh, working distance to MRT, directly connect to MRT, and followed by like supermarkets um, and affordable food choices. So. You see, these are the top features, right? Okay, so it proves what? It proves that people are willing to pay for the connectivity and convenience. They're willing to pay. Okay? They're willing to pay more. It's not pay, it's pay more. Okay? Then, for the next one. Okay, so you see, um, uh, it's like, a large majority, a large majority, about seventy eight percent, will consider to buy a unit in integrated development. These seventy eight uh, percent respond that they will consider to buy. Okay, so we can see how strong the demand is for buying a unit in an integrated development. Okay, so let's see what Lenton Modern has as a uh, integrated development. Okay. We have six and 605 residential units with full facility. We have swimming pool, tennis court, uh, clubhouse, all these. Lah. Okay. And with, um, with very nice landscape. Okay. And also we have commercial component, which 
which includes uh, which contains like uh, retail and FMBs. So if you want to shop, you, you if you want to do the shopping, you can just go downstairs. Okay. If you want to eat food, you also can just go downstairs. So everything is in you know, one building. And of course you have direct access to MRT. Okay, the MRT is on the Thompson East Coast line. And <clears throat> And also we have a 12,000 square feet supermarket. Okay, so uh, these are the 12,000 square feet definitely is not a minimum size. Lah. Okay, so actually the size, if you go down to the show flat uh, tomorrow, you can feel it is like similar, very similar to the to the to our show flat size. It's a, a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is the size. And also the childcare center is about 10,000 square feet. Okay, and then developer also mentioned to us uh, um now the fair price and store uh, the cold storage already approach approach them and also uh, some like branded childcare center uh, also uh, express interest to them. So uh, and also uh, this mall will be managed by developer. It's not sort of the title. So so uh, your buyer uh this is uh, also a plus point for your buyers. Okay. So, of, uh, so you can see here, uh, the lentil model really give you a big convenience uh, and fulfill, fulfill all your daily needs, uh, can fulfill. Uh, okay. So what are, advantage, what are the advantages of integrated developments? Okay, so first we can boost community, commuting uh, convenience. So we have MRT and in the future, we'll also have a bus stop uh, just outside the retail shop. Okay, we also, we also have a bus stop, uh, not only MRT, okay. And then increased vibrancy. Okay, so Lentor Modern will be the only more at Lentor area. Uh, okay, because we're the only integrated development. Okay, even uh, those like Future Plus all are under residential only. So in the future when the mall is up, uh, and MRT is there, the mall is there, okay. And also we have bus stop. So this area will be will be the heart of like Lentor, will be very vibrant, okay? And also we have like higher uh, demand and property prices. Uh, so integrated development is really sort of the projects are from uh, by, by the buyers. And the, and the buyers is willing to pay the premium. So the price, also the price property price is higher, is higher when you buy, but it also will be higher when you sell, okay? And no need to get wet when it rings because it's all fully sheltered. If you go to the MRT, it's fully sheltered. Uh, and if you want to eat downstairs, if you want to shop downstairs, so no need to get wet. Okay. And demand from tenants and upgraders because uh, the tenants and upgraders, they all they also they also lack the convenience. Okay. So if give them the choice, of course, uh, the integrated development will be the first choice for them. Hmm? Okay. So although the demand, um, the demand of integrated development is very high. Okay, so how's the supply? Okay, you can see the, the supplier uh, is very limited. Why I say that? See, these four things are the completed condo, condo developments. And uh, it's about, in total, it's about like 7,513 7, units. Okay, so which translates to just like 2.5% of the total non-landed stock condos and apartment units. The total stock is about like 200,000. This is the total, the, the total number. <clears throat> so this only 2.5%. Okay. Then if we count in those like new integrated departments, we're still under construction. Okay. So still less than 3%. Okay. So if we include those new integrated developments. And, uh, Okay, so I have a breakdown here. Okay, I have a breakdown here uh, for the for the each unit type. Okay, so you can see uh, each unit type only left like all uh, 75, 85, 64, uh, 85, so all are like 2DG. Okay, not really not, not a lot left. Uh, okay, so you see the one two bedroom. One two bedroom mainly, uh, mainly is Mitam Bay and Mitam Modern, but this is OCR, I think it's different market, right? So let's see the OCR and RCR integrated development, which is Singang Grand, Pasir Ris 8, and Piccadilly Grand. So you see how, how many units left? It's zero. 
Okay, so for the RCI and, uh, and uh, RCI and OCR, uh, actually it's no one bedroom units left already. So how about two bedroom? Two bedroom only left left how many? Uh? Left eight units. That's easy. So for the one and two bedroom, uh, if you want, you buy one to invest. They really for the OCI and, and RCI, they really don't don't know no choice already. Yeah, the the only project they can consider is like is our land model. modern. Okay. Then for the three and big room, uh, the three and big room, you only left like 30 to 40 units. Lah. Okay, so the ticker rate is also very good. So why like that? Why the ticker rate is so good? Okay, so because for the integrated development, okay, three and four big room, uh, three and four big room units also serve two purposes. It's not only for uh, own stay. Okay, for the three and four big room, it's also for investment, for buy invest investment. So like those investors are, uh, if they invest more money, they invest three and two, three and four bedroom, invest more money in, they also get higher profit in the future. Okay, of course, like, you also like those old state buyers, they also want to have the, this like convenience and connectivity. Okay, they, they are willing to pay more. Okay, so uh, so you can see, uh, Really, for uh for the integrated development, uh, the the supply is very limited. Okay, so if your your buyer uh still like hesitate on want to buy, want to uh, not to buy, so let them know. Okay, if they don't buy, uh, is the integrated development is uh, moving the sales is moving very fast. Okay, so you can see how hot it is. Ah, uh, uh, the ticker the ticker rate on the first launch date. Okay, for the Piccadilly, 70, 77 percent sold. And Kenny Hill is also 77% sold on the first day. And for the uh, Passer is 85% sold on launch day. And the Midtown Modern is 61% sold. Okay. So, um, so let's see. Uh, let's guess. Uh, you, think, you think how many percent sold for Landon Modern launch day? You, you think how many percent can sell? I think it definitely will be very hot. Okay. Okay, so now let's see uh, um, why integrated development outperform uh, the, the, the development of the projects nearby. Okay, so let's see the capital gain first. So for, for the park place residences, uh, okay, I use the data is from, from the first day they, they launched to, to now. Uh, okay, so it's uh, all about the same period of time. Okay. See park place residences, uh, the price increased by 24%. And Carton Regency rise by 19%, and Steam Urban Oasis rise by 20%. So you see which one uh, get higher capital gain. Okay. Then in terms of sustain sustainability, okay, you can see for the park place is all the way is the highest at all times. Uh, okay. And the rentability. You can see for the rental uh, if for, for per square for, for per square foot. Okay, the park place is also much higher than the rest two. Okay, then we have another group of uh, case study. Okay, so it's the we see the North Park residences and the projects nearby. Okay, so for the North Park residences, the capital gain from the day one is about twenty four percent. Okay, and for Symphony Suite is fifteen percent. Uh, the Vistaria is about sixteen percent. So which one is the highest? Which one? Of course, it's North, North Point, right? Okay. And the sustainability. This graph, you can see this graph, is also all the way highest. And the rentability. The rentability is also much higher. It's much higher than... Okay. So, so this is why, okay, in, in terms of sustainability, the capital gain, the rentability, uh, integrated development all are all, all are outperformed than the nearby projects, the nearby non-integrated residential projects. Okay. So you can see this. Uh, you, you all know that uh, there are two land parcels so to developer uh, and land area currently. Uh, okay. So um, the one is the Lento Central, which is the which is our Lento Modern. And another one is Lento Hero Parcel A. Okay, so in terms of the land sale price, okay, land sale price, um, Lento Modern, uh, Lento Central is a bit higher, 
So after we count in the, those costs, like the um, construction costs, the marketing costs, all the costs, so we have a break even price, uh, estimated one. Okay. So you can see the difference is about like uh, 184 per square foot. Okay, so 1%, uh, 184 is about like 10% difference, 10% uh, difference in price. Okay, so your buyer will ask again, uh, wow, you see uh, um, uh, the lentil hill road uh, is like 10% lower, lower, so shall I wait for the lentil hill road? Okay, but now I have a question for you. Is the 10% difference as the price premium you pay for the integrated development, is it reasonable? Is it reasonable? Okay, so let's see some case study. Uh. Let's some um, see some. Okay, so you can see for the park place. Okay, park place is about how much premium they pay. Carton Regency is a mixed development. It's not only a rest here. So just for, for your reference. Okay, so it's about, right? It's 29% premium. Then you have pay for the park place. Okay, then if for the North Park residences, how much premium that you have to pay is about 30 plus premium, 30 plus percent premium, right? Okay, and then for the Ule residences, Ule residences is also is like 14 to like 23 premium have to pay for it. And this one, the healing residences, is all, it is like 30 plus premium. So it's overall the premium, um, the buyer pay for the integrated development is about like 20% plus, 20 to 30 lah. So it's about this range, okay? So now you see, uh, do you think the 10% premium, okay, 10, if let's say developer really sell higher, 10% higher, do you think the 10% premium is reasonable for an integrated development? It's very reasonable it's, and it's a good buy, I can say, uh, okay? And if, if, if Lento land, Modern, the sales is good, uh, if Lento Modern, like 80, 90% so do you think, uh, the Lento Hill Road developer will sell cheaper or they will sell higher. Okay. If developer bid at a lower price, doesn't mean that they, they, they want to sell at lower price. Okay. And don't forget, uh, okay. You see the Guacoland is our developer. Is Guacoland, uh, is, uh, Guacoland is Lento Modern developer and also is also a JV partner for the Lento Hill Road. So you see the same developer. If same developer will they kill their project or not? Will they? They won't, right? Okay. So if um for the first move on advantage uh, okay, if you for the first project launch normally you have uh, the most attractive price. Okay. So you you think uh, you ask your buyer to think, should they wait or just buy now? Okay, so let's see this uh this this one, this news again, uh. so for Amor residences 98%, so but Amor residences is not an integrated development. It's a non-integrated development in OCR. Okay, but they sell at 2001 PSF, still can sell, uh, still can sell 98% on the first on the first launch date. Okay, so you can see this is the the uh, high high price transactions uh, for land for Amor residences. So you can see the, the PSF is about like 2003 to 2004. So it proves that the buyer can pay up to 2,400 PSF to buy a non-integrated development in OCR. So how much uh, can Lento Modern sell? How much that the buyer willing to pay for, the, for an integrated development in OCR? Okay, so let's move to the, the next question. Okay. Why should you own a home in the new land or enclave? Okay, you see uh, in this map. Okay, this is the past of Lento. La. So in this map, you can see those condos uh, uh, near or at Lento uh, area. So the newest condo is this. Okay, it's the Meadows at Peace, Pierce. So which completed in 2012 and launched uh, the sales in uh, 2010 around that. Uh, huh? So so there's no new launch in this area uh, in the past 12 years, almost like the past 12, 12 years. So this area become a like forgotten area, it's like out of sight, out of mind. But what happened now? Okay, so you see, uh, after develop, uh, after those, uh, okay, the government, they released six land parcels. 
it have like six land puzzle land here okay and two ha have already been awarded so that to the developer okay so the government is not only like um, release one land they release six land okay of course one is under research uh, uh, if if this area is popular the, 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 the authority will still sell to the okay so it's, it's six land in total release okay then we have, we might have more in the future okay you see the recorder one uh, this six land is the six land that you, you saw just now uh, is uh it, the already released to, to the uh, in the ura website okay and this the rest five the other five land plots which is also under residential planning okay so they likely are uh, they might release to sell in the future okay so you see uh, how many lands are uh, how many land we have in land tall okay and plus for this land i think this part uh, okay actually this land uh, is just released because why uh, you see i i, I checked the street directory the street directory this area is still under forest area okay it's still under forest area but in ura these two is planning under the residential already so can you guess what's the intention of ura they release so many they, they put so many like uh, residential they plan so many residential uh plots uh around this like uh, in the atlanta area and near lento area what's that what's that intention because they want to make lento a new township have more residents move in okay so if there might be more residential plus a land area you have more residential developments with more residents and more amenities and more vibrant the area will be okay so can you imagine now uh, that um what land area will be in like five or ten years time it will be it's like it won't you won't like all of people's uh side all of people mind again Okay, so this area will be a very vibrant area in the future. Okay, this is from uh, this is from your A master plan. Okay, mm, so it has like new parks and seamless pedestrian and connectivity between the teacher estate and the land MRT. Okay, so as well as like have some like commercial amenities to uh, serve the community. So the whole land will be more connected. And stones throw to the hill park from land or more than you see how how close they are okay so we do a case study we did we, we do a case study so for the bidadari bidadari is a cemetery ground in the past you know right okay so after that government announced that uh they want to develop bidadari as a new town new township what they they have uh, they have a uh a, a, a 10 hectare uh, Bidadari Park. Of, of course, our park is not as big as them, but we still have park. Uh, um, it's like just uh, stone's throw away from us. Okay. Then also have like those like shopping commercial places. Uh, we, have, we, we have more. Okay. And also a seamless production cycling network. So actually the concept is very similar to us. So they want to build, when they want to build a, a new township. Okay. Then, okay. So does this planning the new township planning benefit the new developments uh, at this at that at the at that area okay so let's see this so for the ule residences are uh, we uh from uh, the relaunch price to now okay so the 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 price increased by 24 percent okay then the trivial okay this 24 percent uh, is not like uh north part uh, all these are uh, is like mm, like seven eight years for this one it's only what it's three years it's only three years it's from 19 uh it's from like july 19 to now so it's about three years lah. so in these three years lah, the building is about 24 percent okay so for the trigger trigger is 17 percent okay colonial uh increased by 14 percent okay so you can see whether these projects are benefit or not yes they are benefited in these three years okay the capital gain is is like uh 14 percent to like 24 percent so will it happen to lento lento area also okay so the next one what are the exit point of lento modern 
what are the exit points? I have three exit points for you. Okay. So the first one is when the land parcel are launching in the near future. So just now I already mentioned that uh, the six uh, land parcel will be developed as condo in the near future and five land parcel are under residential status and the URA master plan, which likely will release in the future. Okay. And all the 10, uh, only, uh, only our land all, you can, you, you see this size uh, is integrated development. We have, uh, uh, we are in we are connected to MRT and also we have more. The rest all are under residential status only. So these 10 will be the residential units only. They won't have any like mixed development or integrated. It won't have. So you see how unique land tall modern is. Okay, then okay, so for those are although we have like five upcoming land parcels, okay. So Lantong Modern, just now I already said, Lantong Modern is the only integrated development. And Lantong Modern is going to be the first to launch. Okay, so first launch normally will have like a more attractive price. And also uh, you consider with the rising net cost, labor cost, construction cost, do you think developer will sell, sell at higher or lower price in the future? Okay, and these six, is uh these six lands are is on is those like release lands we still have like five lands are is still in the land land bank the uh, the, the authority side hasn't released yet so release in the future so we think uh, the future price okay so these are uh, show us uh, as the new rcl benchmark the pricing so it's already up to 2004 okay so the ocr ocr is up to like 2001 already which are more residences right Okay, so this is the new benchmark pricing. Okay. And this one, this is what I want to highlight. Lah. It's, the, it's the latest uh, OCR land bid. <coughs> okay. Um, this one is the unblock, the reason unblock uh, for the lakeside apartments. So you can you can see the land price uh, in terms of land price. In terms of land price, land landside apartment is higher than us. But land landside apartment is what? It's a non-integrated development in OCR. It's a non-integrated development. It's not integrated development, but their land cost is higher than us. And if we count in those costs, uh, those costs like the construction marketing costs, they how much you see how much higher? They're still higher than us. Okay. So meaning to say, meaning more room for land or modern pricing to grow and profit in the future, right? Oh, you see, uh, it's not only those like construction costs, rising costs, it's, it's the land costs are also higher than us. Eh? Okay. So I will move to the, the second point is um, the exit point. The second exit point is when the north-south corridor completed. Okay. So you see the north-south corridor uh, uh, will be Singapore's longest transit priority corridor and expected to, to be completed in 2027. Uh, it will directly connect the northern region, northern region, uh, to the city center. Okay, so I think the Samoa, Amokyu, Bishan. Okay, this area will be the most will be most benefited. Okay, and the corridor will feature will have feature dedicated bus lane, cycling truck routes, and pedestrian paths. And the whole, uh, the total length of uh, the North South Corridor is about twenty one point five uh, kilometer. Okay. So let's see this photo. This is how the North uh, South Corridor look like. So they have a, they have a cycling path. You see, and the pedestrian, pedestrian path, and also the bus lane. Okay, dedicated bus lane. So this is what not uh, the North South Corridor will look like in the future. Okay, so the corridor will also elevate uh, the traffic on the CTE and major arterial roads such as uh, Thompson and Marymount Road. So if you drive car from the from town direction to um to Lentor Modern, um, so likely uh, you will pass you you will you will drive through the CTE or the Thompson Road. So with this uh, north south corridor is. Uh, Directly, uh, it's benefit the, the future, our owners, mental models owners. Okay. And also we for the for those like take bus, uh, the, the north south corridor will also save an average like 10 to 15 minutes time uh, of travel time. So it's like save their, their time also for those like take bus. 
and for the cycling pass. The cycling pass is along the entire stretch of highway and it is linked up with our um, uh, our Lentor uh, road pass. Okay, so it's our um, the, the, the cycling pass. Okay, so it's linked with the cycling pass within Lentor area. Okay. So you can see in this map, okay, it's only, it's very, you see this star? So this is the, the entry ramp in the future for the North-South corridor. It's, it's, it's really very close, very near. It's only like maybe three minutes drive. You drive from here, then to here is only three, three minutes. Okay, then you can uh, you can just en enter the uh, North-South corridor. Okay. And these shows I just now already mentioned. So uh, our, our cycling path, uh, cycling path is connected to the is connected to the north south corridor. Is the north south corridor is over here? You can see. Then our pass, our cycling pass is here. So it's all the way connected, and the lentil model is over here. It's all the way connected to the uh, north south corridor. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, how convenient the lentil model is in the future. Okay. The third point. The third point is when the Thompson East Coast Line completed. Okay. So for this line, you can see, uh, because now it's only uh, the, it's at the second stage. Uh. So it's only like from, from here to here, it's not all the way operated yet. So now, um, although, uh, although Lentor MRT station is uh, already open to public, it's, uh, it's, op it's operated now already, but it now is very uh, under, underutilized uh, because um, we still, because the whole line hasn't completed yet, right? But if the line, the Thompson Co East Coast Line completed, it, I think definitely the Thompson Co East Coast Line will be the most, uh, one of the most popular MRT line. Why? Because Thompson East Coast Line is, is the only MRT line, okay, connected to all the rest of MRT line. Okay, you see, uh, connected to the, uh, to the North East Line and to uh, also to the downtown line. Uh, also, this one is the, the green line, the purple line. And also in the future, it will also connect to the future, the upcoming cross island line. I think it's at here, the bring leaf, the bring leaf station. Okay. So it is, the Thompson East Coast Line is the only MRT line that connected to all eight MRT lines. Okay. And this is, uh, this Thompson, East Coast Line is completed, targeted to be completed uh, by 2025. So I think likely by the time the project TOP, Lentor Modern TOP, uh, the Thompson East Line is completed at that time also. Okay, so it will immediately benefit the future owner of Lentor Modern. Okay. So you can see la, oh, how convenient the Thompson East Coast Line is. So it's like 25 minutes to Orchard. Okay, and like a person like 35 minutes to Shenton Way. So it's, you take like only like 25 minutes to, to the town and approximately 35 minutes to CBD. So if you stay in Lentor, you're really not far away from town, from CBD. It's very convenient because the MRT is just downstairs. You will, you no need to work out the building. It's all fully sheltered. And it's directly, you can go or check also need to, no need to change the MRT lines. It's directly, you can go or check and you can go CBD. Even you work in CBD, okay, uh, you want to shop at a, a, a town, at a orchard. It's all very convenient. Okay, and uh, and this I can see. Uh, so along the Thompson East Coast Line, we only have three shopping malls, including, uh, 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 now only have two. Uh, one is the Causeway Point and one is Ion. So Lentor will be the third shopping mall along the Thompson East Coast Line. Okay, so you, you imagine also in the future, the tenants want to rent a unit along this MRT line. So, so where will they choose? Um, okay, if, of course, if they are rich, uh, they, they can rent orchard residence, right? But if for normal people like me, uh, uh, the, the landlord definitely is the more affordable development and more convenient development for them to rent with convenience, right? Okay. So, uh, we are also just three MRT stops away to the start of North or uh, Woodland area. 
Okay, the Woodlands. Okay, the Woodlands and Marty Station. What will happen in Woodlands? So Woodlands Regional Center will be the largest economy hub in Singapore. It's not uh, Singapore's North region. And over 100 hectares of land for business, industry, uh, research and development and learning and innovation. And the Ulan North Coast uh, and Ulan Central uh, will position as the key commercial center, bringing a broad range of good jobs closer to residents of North. So what does it mean? Uh? It means that you have a large pool of potential tenants and buyers in the future. Okay, so you can see actually this is also a very good point for you to tell customer. You don't worry like in the future, you sure got tenants. Uh. Okay, in the future, sure, uh, sure got the, the buyer, they want to take up your uni uh, and pay the higher price. Okay, so that's all uh, for my part. Now I will hand over to uh, Dixon. Dixon. The unique features okay, of Lentor Modern. Okay, but before that, let's take a look at the, the team behind this iconic structure in Lentor Prison. Okay, so of course the developer needs not much introduction. So here we are, we have a renowned developer, Grapo Land. Okay, a leading developer in integrated mixed use and luxurious development. So over the past couple of years, they have won multiple awards. Okay, across all developments that they have done. Okay, so mainly, okay, Graco Tower, okay, and Graco Midtown. Okay, so the very first one that really makes us, you know, uh, remember this development developer is the iconic Vertical City. Okay, they have done, which is also the very first integrated developments they have done in Singapore, which is Graco Tower. Okay, so these developments, okay, not just appeal to local Singaporeans, okay, so it also appeals to international buyers with its unique design as well as timeless outlook. Okay, so not only it is iconic, okay, it has created and rejuvenated, okay, the entire Tanjung Paga, okay, to give a very fresh, okay, feeling, okay, and as well as outlook to the entire Tanjung Paga precinct. Okay, so following the success of this first integrated development, okay, they have successfully launched the next integrated development in Kampong Glam, okay, which is Krako Midtown, okay, namely Midtown Bay and Midtown Modern in Kampong Glam, okay. So when they <coughs> created Krako Midtown, okay, they want to set, they want to set themselves uh, uh, apart from the competition within the area, okay. So the unique design, okay and garden in the city concept okay successfully appeal to many singaporeans okay as well as hitting trans record high transactions okay to a high of close to four thousand seven hundred dollars per square feet okay for a unit <coughs> in the kampong kampong glam precincts okay so not only not only they are leading integrated developers okay so they have done many luxurious developments okay in singapore Okay, just to name a few, okay, uh, Goodwood Residents, Leiden Residents, Mayor Mansion, Martin Modern, and Midtown Modern. All right, so the very first of the uh, Modern series started in 2017, okay, when Graco Land launched the very first, okay, modern developments called Mid Martin Modern, okay, in the River Valley Precinct. Okay, so when they created, okay, so being a 99 years residential plot, okay, uh, Graco Lens, <clears throat> okay, aims to design, okay, a building that can withstand the test of time, okay, a very timeless, okay, uh, design and concept that appeals to generations, okay, not just for buyers who are buying into Martin Modern right now, but also for future buyers, okay, so the flexibility of use of space, okay, for the developments has successfully appealed, okay, to many, many of the developers. Uh, home buyers, okay, who are willing to splurge record high prices to own a piece of Martin Modern in the River Valley precincts, okay. So following the success of Martin Modern, okay, uh, the same team, okay, move on to build the next series, okay, in the Modern series, okay, which is the Midtown Modern, okay. So Midtown Modern, okay, uh, with the same team successfully, okay, uh, appeals to the demands of many home buyers, okay, and successfully become the top selling luxurious developments in 2021, 
okay, crossing more than 60% sales on day one launch, okay, with highest transaction, okay, hitting almost $4,700 per square feet, all right? So, and an interesting fact about this is, okay, 85% of midtown moderns, okay, are purchased by local Singaporean buyers, okay? So that's, that's, <clears throat> that's a test, okay? So that's a statement on how Land has successfully appealed to local buyers' appetite, okay? And with the success of Midtown Modern and Martin Modern, okay, so this time round, okay, they are going to bring the third, okay, to series of the Modern series, okay, to Lantor Modern, okay? So the first look at this, okay, uh, I feel that it is a combination between Midtown Modern, okay, as well as Martin Modern. So basically, they are bringing Martin Modern and Midtown Modern to the Lentor Enclave. All right. So just to share a little bit on the unique location we are located in. Okay. So we are located in a very private residential enclave and a very rare plot. Okay. That is fronting two of the largest nature parks in Singapore. So namely the Lower Savlita Reservoir Park. Okay. As well as the Thompson Nature Park. Okay. So the sites, okay, within 500 meters, okay, proximity, okay. We are mainly located within the private residential enclave. Okay, so mainly landed and condominiums. Okay, so some interesting facts to take note. Okay, so although we are integrated developments integrated to uh, Lentor MRT station, but the MRT tracks do not run across the actual site. Okay, so just things to take note in case some of your buyer may ask. Okay, so the actual railway track does not run under the okay, residential blocks. Okay, so we okay have the highest plot ratio in the entire precincts okay or enclaves okay so that would set us to be one of the tallest okay residential developments and landmark okay in the entire landlord enclave and once completed okay so this is something <clears throat> we can look forward to okay and we are the only mixed use developments with retail in the enclaves okay Okay, so, so look into the surrounding. Okay, surrounding us are mainly private residential enclaves. Okay, and they are mainly low rises. Okay, so fronting the Lentor landed enclave, we have okay highest three stories with attic. Okay, uh, leather houses. Okay, and of course to our right, okay, we have Thompson Grove, which is only just four stories. Okay, as well as Thompson Grove, sorry, Thompson Grove, which is just eight stories high. <clears throat> okay, so that will give us a very clear okay view okay, out, okay, to the reservoirs, okay, so, okay, take a look at the site map, okay, so the main bulk view of the entire developments, okay, will be fronting the north, okay, as well as the south, so if you are looking towards out to the north, you are looking towards the lower Salita Reservoir Park, okay, and if you are looking towards the south, okay, you are looking towards the Upper Pierce Reservoir Park, Okay, so just a view, okay, uh, a drone view, okay, on uh, level 14, okay, towards the north, okay, which is the lower Salita Reservoir Park. So this is the view you're expecting, clear unblocked views, okay, with greeneries and natures, okay, within sites, okay. And of course, if you are tall enough, okay, probably you will see some water features from the reservoirs, okay. So if you are looking towards south, okay, you are facing Upper Pierce Reservoir Park, where you will look past okay, the Hillock Park, okay, as well as the Thompson Nature Park, and just further away, you might have a glimpse of the Bukizima Hills. Okay, so the integrated appeal, okay, is the, okay, is the concept that really sets Lentor Modern, okay, apart from other residences in the Lentor precincts. Okay, so just a little bit of facts, okay, so we have a total of 605 units, okay, uh, in the developments, okay, over three stories, sorry, over three, spread across three towers, okay, to a height of 25 stories, okay, so within the developments, okay, we will house 96,000 square feet of commercial spaces, okay, with 12,000 square feet of supermarkets and 10,000 square feet of childcare center, okay, so to put things into perspective, okay, if you are questioning how big is 96,000 square feet, I think the nearest, nearest comparison we have is Salita Mall, okay, so Salita Mall is 188,000 square feet, so that would effectively put us half the size of Salita Mall, all right, okay, so and, uh, 
Another interesting fact is we have okay a total of 542 okay car park lots okay that is 90 percent allocation okay to all residents and the parking lots i refer here does not include your retail parking lot so 542 plus five accessible lots only for the residents so it is a 90 percent allocation which is very rare for integrated developments okay so we are not your typical commercial first story so as Susan mentioned earlier okay so uh we have ninety six thousand okay worth of uh, commercial space to put things into perspective okay we are looking at approximately 51 okay commercial shop space okay estimated okay with twelve thousand square feet of supermarket okay so uh from what we know from the developer Cold storage and NTUC have been in talk with them. So likely one of them will be the anchor tenant of Lentor Modern Mall. Okay, so along with 10,000 square feet of childcare space, okay, which appeals to many of the branded, okay, childcare centers in Singapore. Okay, so we are likely to expect one of the renowned, okay, childcare center to be taking over this space when Lentor Modern is completed. Okay, so not only that, okay, just right out, we have a public plaza, okay, beautifully designed, okay, okay, to host events, okay, and to promote interactions between residents as well as the public, okay, so this also serves as a connection, okay, to the Hulock Parks, which in turn, okay, connect us with the nature parks and the surrounding, <clears throat> okay, so another interesting fact is we are just less than one minute, okay, from the residents to the retail deck, so what do I mean by that? Okay, so something to take note, all residential towers have direct access from residence level down to the retail podium. Okay, so it's a direct access for all three towers. Okay, so we have checked with the uh, uh, architect. Okay, so they say that, okay, uh, from level 25 story, okay, uh, down to the retail podium, it will just take you 36 seconds. Okay, so that's how fast, okay, you are expected, okay? So when you are staying in Lentor Modern, okay, you are connected from residence, okay, down to the retail podium in less than one minute. Okay, so not just connected to the retail podium, okay, we are directly connected to Lentor MRT station. So those who have done a sidewalk with us, okay, so in the future, there will be an opening that connects, okay, the station from Exit 1, okay, directly to Lentor Modern Mall. Okay, so next up, I will share a little bit on the design concept. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time in here. Okay, so just to let you have an idea. And when you come down to the sales gallery on Friday, we will share more on the unique design concepts. All right, so before, um, okay, the entire Lentor enclave becomes a residential enclave. Okay, so we are actually a secondary forest, okay, called Lentor Secondary Forest. Okay, with two streams okay, running through the entire enclave. Okay, and just happened if you look at the pictures at the top, okay, uh, Lentor Modern actually sits on one of the river streams, okay, within the uh, secondary forest. So with this information in mind, okay, uh, the designers actually draws inspiration from this information, okay, to create Lentor Modern. Okay, so here you can see, okay, they have created three zones, okay, drawing inspiration from where we used to be, okay, so I'll just do a quick run through on uh, the different zones, okay, to, so that you know what to expect, okay, so zone one, okay, will be rem remembrance, okay, it's really to remember our roots, okay, so on level one, okay, you will realize that, okay, they will create, okay, to preserve the memories of the previous Lentor forest, okay, they will try to create a very foresty ambience, okay, by planting multiple trees across the entire development. So you will see a lot of trees, okay, surrounding the entire Lentor Modern to create this very foresty ambience, okay, to remember, okay, the roots, okay, and the history of this particular plot of land, okay. So at the retail deck, so earlier I mentioned that, hey, okay, we used to sit on a river stream that runs across okay, the entire Lentor Forest, okay, but this stream has to be covered up, okay, to make way for residential developments. So, uh, based on this, okay, uh, the developer have created a 200 meter long water body on the facilities deck, okay, as you see over here, okay, 
okay, as a memory of the streams that you used to run through, okay, this this particular sites, okay, and <clears throat> okay, and the whole idea was to create wellness and respite, okay, along the streams, okay, to create uh very relaxing activities and pavilions. So with that that inspiration in mind, okay, you will notice that a lot of many of the facilities at uh, Lentor Modern, okay, will be built surrounding this 200 meter long water body, okay, that's when you have things like water pond, bridges, okay, our grand clubhouse, okay, that is fronting the lily, pot, lily pond, okay, we will feature a 50 meter lap pool, okay, as well as a 25 meter lap pool, okay, and of course we have many beautiful lawns, okay, and pools and steam pavilions that will be located along the water bodies. All right, so you can have a look at this when you come down to the sales gallery on Friday, okay, to appreciate the beauties, okay, done by the developer. Okay, so at level 14, okay, we will have sky terraces, okay, across all three towers, okay, and the whole idea was to create, okay, a very privacy and quiet ambience where residents can enjoy. All right, so at level 14, okay, you will see that they will try to create a vertical forest, okay, at level 14, okay, with the plan of, okay, uh, maximizing views, okay, across the natural reserve in the surrounding, okay, so residents can head up to level 14, okay, to enjoy, uh, to do some solo, solo work or small group interactions, okay, as well as to appreciate the views, okay, so just some perspective of what's going to happen, okay, on the level 14 review. <coughs> Level 14, okay, viewing deck. Okay, so some key unique features, okay. Okay, so uh, at Lentor Modern, it's all very simple. Okay, we only have four unit type. Okay, so mainly the one bedroom, two bedroom plus flex, three bedroom plus flex, okay, and a four bedroom plus flex. So it's all very simple. So for two bedrooms, there is only two variation. So they are mainly the two bed one bath, okay, plus flex, and a two bed two bath plus flex, okay. So three bedrooms will feature more variations, okay, where you have six different layouts, okay, and for the four bedrooms, there is only one layout, okay. So the entire developments, okay, and unit plans are very simple to understand, okay, and presented. All right, some key features, okay, of, uh, <clears throat> okay, some key design features, okay, of units at Lentor Modern. So all master bedrooms can fit in a king size bed, okay. Common bedroom can fit in a queen size, okay. And something very unique, okay. So for selected units, okay, developer is fitting in jumbo size master bedroom. So what is jumbo size master bedroom? So okay, so it is a master bedroom that's larger than usual. So you can fit in a king size with a dressing table. Okay, as well as a side table side by side. So later we can observe it, okay, uh, on the floor plans, okay, that is provided. All right. And of course, all, all two bedrooms come with efficient dumbbell design, dumbbell layouts design. Okay. And for the flex room, okay, so flex room will be available for all unit type, okay, from two to four bedrooms. Okay. So a flex room can accommodate, okay, a single bed. So it can couple as a small bedroom if required, okay. And of course, we have the latest update, okay. So there will be no doors provided, okay, for the flex room, okay. Not for the no doors will be provided, okay, even for the three and four bedrooms, okay. And for the kitchen area, okay, we will have a specially designed, okay, vertical storage, okay, for most units. All right. So let's have a look, okay, at our. Show flat layouts, okay, that you will be viewing, okay, on uh, Friday, all right. So at the show flat, we features the largest two bedroom plus flex, okay. So here you features a dumbbell layout, okay, dumbbell layout two bedroom, okay, with a flex room, okay, as well as a semi enclosable kitchen, okay, okay. So a flex room and a semi enclosable kitchen, okay. So some very unique features, okay, to take note is. Okay, there is actually, okay, natural ventilations, okay, for the kitchen area where they will feature a window as well as a, a curtain walls, okay, okay, or windows, okay, in the flex room, 
Okay, so to allow more natural lights to come into the unit. Okay, so not only that, okay, we will feature a room or vertical storage, okay, inside the kitchen. So something to take note, okay, when you are, okay, you are observing the sales gallery on Friday. Okay, so developer have also done up, okay, very nicely, okay, the DB box for all units, okay, to allow display shelf, okay, as well as storage area. So we have a pictures later to, to, to showcase. All right. So for the three bedrooms, okay, we will showcase, okay, type C4, okay, at 1109 square feet, okay, where we will feature, okay, a living, living area, okay, with two bedrooms and a jumbo size, okay, master bedroom. Yeah, so over here, you will observe what a jumbo size master bedroom means, okay. So you can fit in a king size bed, okay, with a dressing table by the side, as well as a side table. Okay, flex room is also located next to the master bedroom to provide okay more flexibility and options okay to expand the master room master bedroom area if required. Okay, and of course for the four bedders, okay, we will okay we will showcase a massive one thousand five hundred and twenty eight square feet four bedder. Okay, featuring dry wet kitchens. Okay, two common bedrooms that can fit in a queen size. Okay, and Two jumbo master bedroom. Okay, so I'm I'm emphasizing two jumbo master bedrooms. So you have my master and the junior. Okay, which is of similar size. Okay, two point eight meter width, four meter height. Okay, so you have two master bedrooms in the four bedroom unit type. Okay, and same thing, you have a flex room located next to the master bedroom to provide additional space. Okay, for the masters if required. All right, so some other design features that you can observe when you come down to the sales gallery. Okay, so the entire finishes, okay, use, okay, uses a very natural palette, okay, so you can observe, okay, and something very easy, okay, to, 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 to remember, okay, so all unit types, okay, uses the same finishes, okay, so I emphasize again, uh, all unit types uses the same finishes. Okay, where we have porcelain tiles, marble look alike porcelain tiles on the living dining area. Okay, porcelain tiles on all bathroom. Okay, engineered timber flooring for all bedrooms. Okay, not laminated flooring. Uh, so engineered timber flooring. Okay, for all bedrooms. Okay, as well as laminated. Okay, for all door frames and wardrobe. Okay, so some other finishes that you can take notes. Okay. And of course, okay, some key features where you can observe inside the uh, kitchen area, okay, where they have this smart, smart storage area, okay, that will be done up and provided by the developer. Okay, and also observe the VB box area because it has been beautifully designed, okay, as a shoe cabinet area, okay, with a decking, okay, that allows you to put shoes, okay, as well as to spaces for your robot cleaners. Okay, robot for cleaners to stay. Okay, and interesting fact is they actually provided switch socket also. All right. Okay, so all appliances will be provided by Snack. Okay, so I'm not going to run through uh, in details. Okay, so you can observe this when you are heading to the sales gallery. Okay, then of course kitchenware will be provided by Hans Boher. Okay, at Roka for bathroom breast. Okay. Okay, so WC fittings will be provided by Monique and Johnson Suite.